Hey there, this is Brian Jackson, Ableton Certified Trainer from Brooklyn, New York, and today I'm going to talk about a mystery, a power dither mystery. It's also a prime example of well-intentioned people propagating bad information on the internet. Before we get started, here's a quick example from another video I'm working on. No dither. With dither. If you know nothing about Dither, I've added some good videos for you to check out in the info cards in the upper right corner and in the description. But briefly, it's very low level random noise that's added to your audio when you lower resolution. This is to minimize or eliminate quantization distortion. That other video I'm working on is about when and how to use Dither, but first I need to correct some errors you're likely to stumble across. So you pull up the export dialog in Logic or Live or another DAW, and you're greeted with a bunch of options, including dither. And instead of digging up and searching through a massive manual, you understandably do the faster thing and Google power dither. And perhaps you click on a link to Sweetwater, and great, this seems like good info, or perhaps mastering the mix. I quite like some of their products actually. And you see info similar to Sweetwater, or on Craig Anderton's blog. I've been reading his articles in various magazines for literally decades or on the IK Multimedia Forum, or on Sage Audio, or on otherwise good YouTube channels, or numerous other sites I found like these. They all say similar things, so the info must be correct, you think. But what if they all transposed Power 1 and Power 2 with each other, and described Power 1 as flat dither, which it's not? And you might find some info that's not only wrong, but pretty weird too like these random sites that copy part of the Ableton manual, but then give Power 3 as some bad interpretation of Power 2, and seem to have just guessed for Power 1 and 2. One obviously just copied from the other, but regardless, these pages are examples of mostly useless noise. This is what the Ableton Live manual says about Power Dither, though I don't think it's actually correct to say the noise is pushed above the audible range in all cases. So anyways, what sent me down this nerdy rabbit hole? You're looking at a slide from a PowerPoint I created around 2008 or 2009 when I was teaching mastering at SAE here in New York City. I pulled this slide up a few months ago for a mixing and mastering course I currently teach at 343 Labs. All of this text was copied from Wikipedia way back then, and this info is correct. Here's Wikipedia now basically saying the same thing. But for some reason I did a search and pulled up one of the aforementioned pages in class and notice that something had changed with regards to Power 1 and Power 2 on everything I was pulling up. So my students asked what I'd been using. I said, usually Power 2 makes the most sense for the music I tend to master. Did I do it wrong, they asked. I told them that the number of clients that had ever asked for revisions over the past 20 plus years based on my dither selection was precisely zero. So the lesson here was that dither is important, but the specific one you use maybe not so much. Long story short, I was pretty baffled and later dug around for the Weiss Power Dither spec sheet that's dead linked on Wikipedia, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I finally decided to reach out to the source for answers. Just over a week ago, I sent an email to Weiss Engineering. Daniel Weiss promptly wrote me back and referred me to John LeGrew. John also promptly replied and confirmed that my information was good. So we know that ostensibly good sources seem to have, for some reason, transposed the descriptions for Power 1 and 2. But what about Power 1 being flat dither? This is Akash Murthy's YouTube channel. I highly recommend it without hesitation. But even he fell into the power mystery quicksand. Daniel Weiss attached the manual for the now vintage Gambit power dither hardware unit. Here's the curve for Power 1. While technically it's not noise shaped, it's clearly not flat. And all of this time, good info has been right here in front of us. Here's the logic manual. And this is from Magic's webpage for SoundForge, which has similar info as in the Pro Tools plugin guide. This is Eric McGreeny, AKA Terakith. You should check out his YouTube channel and the free music production PDF guides available on his website. Over a decade ago, he was one of the most active and most respected members on Ableton's old school style forum. In 2013, I even interviewed him for one of my books. 
Now in 2009, he offered a quality reply to a thread, which still serves as a great starting point for how to correctly approach using Power Dither. And the same info is here from my old PowerPoint. And this is from the current SoundForge page. While I haven't solved the mystery of the transposition errors propagation, my best guess is that perhaps Sweetwater or another high traffic site made an honest mistake. And people simply copied that text because who actually wants to spend their time researching dither algorithms other than me, I guess. But regardless, the ultimate answer on which dither to use was in the email I received from Daniel Weiss. Everything else, when accurate, is just to point you in the right direction. If you appreciated this video, please give it a like and consider commenting, sharing, or subscribing.